All right, I want to make it just a quick little video about the power feed coming into the home. So we're about 400 feet off the road, as you can see. Um, and the utility company wanted me to originally put in a transformer by the house, obviously, so there was no issue with voltage drop. Um, that did require me to install four inch conduit for the main service feed. And in addition to that, they wanted me to install a spare. So by the time you run 400 feet, of four inch double conduits all the way back you're talking five six thousand dollars just in conduit alone then they wanted another six thousand dollars for the transformer and to pull the primary so i opted to actually put my main panel up by the road transformer on the pole as typically would be done however i stepped up my cable all the way from the main panel to the home to a 350 um, MCM cable to deal with that voltage drop. So now from the distance um, You could calculate it multiple ways if you do it at a 200 amp draw um, You might be a little lower than you'd uh, prefer um, There are some code rules you do have to follow for how much loss however You're never going to be drawing 200 amps into this house. Um, you know, it's debatable but depending on the type of uh, heating system and uh, other accessories you have, maybe you got a shop, ran off the same power, but typically you're going to be running anywhere from 20 to 50 amps, something like that. Um, you might have some surges as devices come on, but you're not going to be pushing 200 amps. So really a realistic voltage drop will be essentially nothing uh, at that lower amperage with a 350 size wire. So um, what I had to do is because the main panel up top does not accept that size cable uh, It'll only take up to about four out aluminum uh, So we had to put in some junction boxes in order to step back down to the smaller size cable um, and that's fine to do because The loss the voltage loss is going to be in the long run. So as long as you make up for that with a larger cable uh, better conductor um, you won't have as much as much voltage drop. So what happens is we got the 350 running from the main panel all the way down here It comes up into here and this is where I splice it Into some 4 out that will go into this LB and into our breaker panel, which I'll show you in a second So I went ahead and got these Polaris taps um, These are meant for connecting up to three wires They didn't have just a two wire connector in this size once you go up to 350 500 They expect you to be basically tapping off to feed so that's why they give you the three so uh, what's nice is it just it does come with plugs so this would be the plugs for the allen tool that you stick in there to tighten everything up and torque them down uh, this gives you the option to actually connect from the bottom and the top so technically you could actually connect six connections to each of these um, or actually no probably not six you could just still three but you could come in either direction i take that back so um, they make these things in all sorts of configurations and sizes and uh Pretty cool. They have some that are uh, meant for long troughs and stuff like that you can connect sideways with. So um, definitely check them out. Like I said, they're Polaris taps. Polaris is the company right there. Um, you do have to get them in the correct size. Obviously, they make all different sizes. You can get them everything down to a small standard wire all the way up to big uh, service feed cables. So that this is what I've been doing today is just getting the main service feed that comes in into here. Tie these in. I'll go in here and show you the breaker panel that we got set up this morning as well. It's a little dark in here. I think it'll be fine on camera. So um, we came in through the side right here with our conduit. I used another LB to come up into the panel. Now these LBs are really nice to be able to feed the wire in. I could have used an elbow, but when I went to the store, there's two reasons. Uh, when I went to the store, I wasn't even sure if the elbow would be uh, too tight to make the height of the panel that where I wanted it. So I did opt for the LB. Um, it is nice because if you do want to run anything, you can just pop that off. Trying to snake another wire in there is close to impossible with an elbow if I ever needed to run something else in there. So um, yeah, this is it. We're gonna go ahead next and connect our main wires here to this. Now, technically this is a sub panel because my main panel is up by the road. So you do have to ensure that you're not using a bonding screw on a sub panel. So that I took out completely. Now the bonding screw is right here, which I'm actually going to get rid of because this comes factor installed right here. And it says on this sticker, uh, bonding screw when required to bond ground and neutral thread screw in case 
into case and torque it down. Now, it's not a good idea to leave this here in a sub panel because if somebody does come in here and say, oh, that wire is loose and they go and tighten it up, you're now, not only is it uh, not following code, but it's unsafe. So take the screw out completely, save it somewhere else. Um, you'll never need it if this is a sub panel, but um, that's it. You just have to be conscious about that. One thing you also have to make sure is that this cable, you also need four wire anytime you're running from a main panel to a sub panel because because these are separated, you also need to run a ground back to uh, that main panel. So you're gonna have your two hots, your neutral, and your ground, um, and those will get looked up. When you do actually not use this as a shared neutral and ground, you need to purchase these separate ground bars, which I did, and then you just screw them right in here. So all the grounds will land here. All my neutrals can now land on both sides. Um, and that's pretty much it. So there's a lot to this stuff. I mean, if you're not aware of what you're doing or anything, just give me, leave a comment or uh, email me separately. If you've got any questions about what you're doing, um, I'd love to help you guys out. Everything is, uh, follows, you know, National Electric Code, but however your local code may also have some additional requirements, but always check into that. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue tying this in. And once I have these mains tied in here, then we're gonna go up to the panel at the road and do the same thing in the junction box that's outside in order to connect to that panel. Because obviously up there, I can't connect 350 wire into that panel, panel either. So I have more Polaris co connectors up there and it's gonna just be identical to this. So uh, one thing to point out is it's extremely hard to bend these wires. I mean, these are very fat wires. You can see they're, they're bigger than my thumb, this 350. The 4-0, you could kind of play with a lot easier, bend it by hand, especially if it's warm out. It's a nice warm day today. If you're trying to do this in the middle of winter or when it's really cold, um, it's not impossible. You're just going to be fighting it a lot more. The metal's colder, tougher. The plastic turns into basically extremely hard plastic. It doesn't bend much. So one thing I recommend is a tool like this. There's a million different versions you could get. This one's really neat because you could just attach it to any size ratchet. If you need a smaller size to reach in somewhere, you could get a smaller ratchet, um, but it just pops on here. It allows you to put it right over this cable and just tweak these and, and make some nice bends in it. So I got everything stuffed in here. It's tight, uh, but it's gonna do the job. You just spend, you know, take the time, fit it real nice and neat that way when the inspector sees it too he knows that you're not screwing around you know what you're doing so uh yeah that's it if you guys got questions like i said leave a comment email me whatever uh, if you haven't subscribed definitely uh click subscribe and give this one a thumbs up we got tons of videos on uh, a lot of stuff like this construction work this whole entire house build we're actually have a playlist on um so go ahead and check those out and tons of videos are still to come on this whole build so uh with that said we'll see you guys on the next one